Hey everybody, it's Chad Northeast here, and I'm going to be back doing a few videos. Um, flying in here in Canada is pretty much wrapped up. It's fall and it's getting cold. We've had some snow. So we'll spend some time maybe answering some questions uh, through video content, um, showing you a few things uh, on some transmitters and whatnot. Um, just a little different take versus the the big build video we did last year. I am building my second Akuma, but I'm probably not going to repeat a full build series on that one. Uh, most of the process is going to be exactly the same. So what I want to show you today on the transmitter, this is a 32MZ, um, and this really came up when I was helping a friend program his model just around the using of, uh, of ATV or endpoint adjustment on a Futaba and sort of what um, interaction that has with other parts of the programming. Some trim, P-mix, uh, your regular trim, just the setting of that ATV, you know, how to use it, and maybe maybe even people have, you know, felt this effect, you know, in their own flying and maybe didn't realize what it was caused by. Um, and it just has to do with how you set that up and, and the effect of it. So I'm going to show you on a 32MZ, it really would be the same uh, whether you're using a 18MZ, whichever version of that, a WC or the, the old, older one, um, 16SZ, 18SZ. I'd probably this phenomenon has probably been through all the transmitters and it really just has to do with the fact that endpoint adjustments in the linkage menu, not in the condition menu. Um, I'm going to show you using a BLS 171, this is you know, just a brand new servo that I got here and I've, I've glued on a little pointer just so it makes it a bit easier to see what I'm talking about um, rather than just from the server arm. So it just sort of you know, enhances the effect. Um, this is uh, a 7108 SB receiver, so it's the newer one with the kind of fat ends on it, a um, little more sensitive. So I'm going to use that receiver to show you. And just a 2S LiPo plugged straight in. So very simple setup um, to demonstrate this, uh, this kind of effect. I'll show you the screens, I'll get the other camera and I'll get zoomed in right on the screen so you can see it, see it happening up close and, and, I'll, and I'll kind of program it from scratch so that you're not, you, you know, you don't, you see how I kind of get there and the steps um, that I use when I, when I set up a plane and also kind of the pitfalls to avoid when, when doing your own models um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have it on the radio so you can kind of see it step by step walk through. Okay, so I got the servo sitting there with the pointer. I put some white paper down just with some, some lines on it so it maybe makes it a bit easier to see the movement. Um, just battery plugs straight in. Very, very simple setup, um, but it just, it just for demonstration. So that servo is on the, on the aileron stick. Um, you know, I set up a brand new model. Um, it's, it's just set up as two aileron an elevator. So two separate elevators and two separate ailerons and a single rudder. So if you were to go into linkage, unlock that, you are going to linkage and go into function, you can kind of see the, the channel set up, right? So so like I say, this is, I've got this plugged into the S-Bus port. Um, on the receiver, it, this effect would be the same no matter what. So we're going to make sure our trims are zeroed out. Um, you know, and obviously if, if it's a new model, your sub trim zeroed out. All of our endpoints, you know, are sitting at 100%. This is a default setup. When you first create a model, this is what it looks like. So, <clears throat> so what what you'll what you'll notice in Futab is there's three menus primarily: system linkage, and this is called you know this is airplane but it, it used to be the condition condition menu this is it's a uh, I don't know if they call it model menu now at any rate it's it's the one where your AFR your conditions you know your mixes all that stuff so you got to really think of the way Futab is fundamentally set up system globally affects the radio every model right so if you change the date and the time it affects the date and the time in every single model program that you have <clears throat> You change the username, it's the same username up here, that's my name, um, every single model. 
So that's a global change. Linkage menu is global to the model. So this affects every condition within the model. So if you change subtrim, it affects the subtrim on that channel through every condition that you have programmed within the model. It doesn't affect a different model, but it affects everything within that model. And within the airplane or the, the model menu, condition menu, all these are global within the condition. So if you set up different conditions, which there aren't any here, but it's always condition one, there's always one condition and that's condition one. You set up condition one, um, if you set up condition two, three, four, you can have different AFRs, mixes, um, switch programming, all kinds of stuff. Anything in here can be different within each condition. But anything within the linkage menu is the same in every condition. That's why this is, that's where this is a bit important. You'll notice endpoint and um, subtrim are located within the linkage menu. So those things are global to the model. They, they don't change with each condition. And why is that important? I'll show you in a second here. So let's say you set up a brand new model and you leave, you go into ATV and you leave everything the same, right? You just left it 100%, throw a seam okay, um, and you go fly it. So now you go fly that plane and you add some trim to it. And I'm just going to add, um, I'm just going to go into the trim menu here. Now I've, I've changed that to four. I'm just going to leave that at four. Four is the default. That's the number of steps. Normally you want to lower that down. I'll show you that. I'll come back to that in a minute, but I'm just going to go four so it, it moves a lot. You'll notice the servo is moving trim. I'm going to go right. So let's go 10, 10 points of trim, right? So you'll notice that servo's moved, you know, it's moved a decent amount, right? That's a significant amount of trim. And that would be pretty coarse. You make a, you make a trim. So now you fly it. You say, okay, I, I just don't have enough throw. I'm going to go and I'm going to add some more throw, but you do it with ATV. Here's the issue. So now on your, this is my other run and it's to the right. So I'm going to change the right one. Let's add 20% more ATV. My snaps aren't fast enough, whatever. I'm going to add 20% more ATV. Watch that servo as I add the ATV. I've not moved the aileron stick. <laughs> right? Watch it again. It's moved. I've not moved the aileron stick. So as I crank that up, that servo continues to move. So that trim setting, you are getting more trim effect with a higher ATV. So higher ATV is effectively kind of reducing the step of the, or increasing the step of the trim rate, I guess I'll say it. So <clears throat> here's what's a bit of an issue for pattern. If I go back now to the main and I go back to my trim, now I normally, this says 10 points, I normally like my trim very fine and I think most pattern planes, they're pretty, they're pretty refined so you can, you can really, you know, see one or two step trim resolution, especially when you get your model really dialed in tight. So let's change this now to a trim step of one. So if we go back here, the trim doesn't change, it just changes to 40. So now I've got 40 points of trim in here. The problem is, is that if I adjust that ATV 20%, um, and you'd really need a super accurate scale to be able to see this, I go now up, up that ATV 20%. I still get movement of trim, but now do I have enough trim resolution to really trim it out? Because I'm gaining more, you know, steps in that, in that actually moving my trim further. So I need to come back on that trim now. I would need to trim it back some to go back to the same spot, right? <clears throat> and I believe if you if you have this just in the right spots, it's possible to have a hard time actually trimming the model because your your individual trim steps are slightly bigger with higher ATV than they are with 100%. So let's check subtrim now. Subtrim, I don't believe it affects the subtrim. Uh, so we'll just add some subtrim in on aileron. We'll make it go to the right. So you see it moved. And we'll come back to endpoint and we'll add. And you'll notice adding ATV doesn't affect subtrim. So it's 
Subtrim is a, a linkage. It's in the same menu, it's a, a linkage. So it, it's not affected by the ATV. So you can have your subtrim and, and it, won't, it won't mess it up. Um, let's do mixes. Let's quickly program in a mix. We'll say render to aileron mix. We'll go over to the to the menu. We'll use the render to aileron mix. We'll just activate that, and we'll just add I don't know we'll add rate A. We'll add. Oh, let's go the other way. We'll add five percent. Oh, so it's going to the right. So again, it's moving to the right. Left rudder, 5% aileron. So let's go back and see if now the ATV has an effect on that. So we get our mix in as we increase the ATV. Yes, it does. You'll see it slowly in increases that, that trim, that mix. So again, if you set up your mix and then you go back and change your ATV, it's going to affect your mix. You're going to have to reduce the mix percentage. So, you know, in these planes, you have one two percent of mix and you know sometimes it's like uh you know one percent is too little two percent is too much adding more atv makes it worse because now you really you really uh you know have a, 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 a more travel in that one percent so so in fact you're better to reduce atv maybe one and a half percent is sufficient right so <clears throat> there's definitely some cross impact so it affects it affects Anything that sits lives in the in the model menu. Um, what does affect trim? Trim really is in the model menu. You can have different trims in each condition. You could have a normal flight with one trim setting and a I don't know a stall turn condition with a different trim setting. When you flip your stall turn condition, the trim changes. So trim really is a, a, a model menu function. So anything in here is going to be affected by that ATV. So that's why it's pretty critical to ensure that you know if you set those ATVs up don't change them um, if you do change them understand that your mix your trim those functions are going to change AFR obviously um, with the ATV personally I like to leave the ATVs a hundred percent in fact I would almost say maybe even 90 percent is better because it kind of refines those resolutions a bit and add that throw in the in the AFR. You can you know you can play back and forth. Second thing on the ATV is is this limit. Um, some people don't really realize that's there. You know if you're not getting this red zone, you know is not it's not going to move in that red zone. Once you hit the red zone, that's really as far as the travel will be. If you need more, you can increase those limits. That's what they do. If you want to limit, you know if you're hitting the rudder on the elevator and you want to lower it, you could limit it down so it can't move any further. But it's going to give you a bit of a dead zone at the end of your at the end of your stick, so that's what that limit means in in uh, in the ATV. If you set your speed up here, it's going to be the same speed, obviously, in every condition. So if you use different throttle, if you run a different uh, throttle speed setting in one condition versus the other, you can't make that adjustment um, in this screen. Um, back to this trim rate thing here for a second, so. In this screen, you can get to the trim directly from here, um, you know, where you can adjust the steps on all these points. It's a little bit hard to figure out which is which. This is this stick, you know, this is this stick, yeah, your elevator, this is your throttle, and this is your rudder, and then these are the other ones. Um, you can show it as a percentage or as a step. Or you can get it to it through the linkage menu. I realize I said it's a, it is a model menu thing. It is, but it, you can get to it through the linkage menu um, in here. So you go to function. So we get into the trim menu from the function menu. So you can access the step from that other menu, or you can access from here. But there's also an additional trim rate option. So what all these mean? <coughs> Um, I guess the simplest way to explain it is trim rate is essentially what the maximum amount of throw is you'll get at maximum trim. So when it says 30%, if you were to trim 
fully over, you would be at about 30% of the of your maximum servo travel. Right? So if we if we look here, maximum servo travel, you know, is approximately there. Um, and we were to trim all the way over. You know, it's about 30%. If I was to increase that to a hundred, the trim rate, you'll see it's about where our maximum you know throw is for the stick. So that's what that trim rate is. The default's 30%. Typically I don't change that. The step, if you want to think about it, if um, you had say a hundred you know points of you know trim went from zero to a hundred percent you know that step is sort of how fine each individual beep of that trim is so in the case of four every time I beep this trim it's giving me four points of trim if I change that step to one it's giving me one point of trim so if I had a hundred steps of motion you know at one I would get a hundred individual trim movements at four I would get you know approximately you know 25 or 25 you know individual trim movements so that it's essentially how fine you're making that in between each step so that's essentially how those two function now I usually leave the trim rate alone and go to a step of one to give me sort of the finest resolution if you found that a step of one was, let's say you had high ATV and a step of one was still not enough, you could come in here and reduce that trim rate, which would give you even better resolution, um, but it would limit the maximum amount of trim available to you, which may, may or may not be an issue. So there are lots of options to set this up. Trim mode, um, normal, I don't know, CTRM, I'm not even sure what that means, and ATL. ATL is typically a like a throttle where it only works below half stick. Anyways, all, all your normal flight functions should be on normal. Um, select hardware is just where you can adjust which trim is doing it. So if you wanted to move your elevator trim, say from this trim tab to this trim tab, you would do it under the under this uh, select hardware. And you would just pick trim tab 5 in that case, right? It would move it up there. Um, and that's essentially it. I just I, that was not super clear to the to the fellow I was helping program the radio uh, when I explained it to him, and I just thought maybe maybe that's not super clear to anybody else either. Um, just how that affects how that ATV can affect some of those other some of those trims and 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 mixes and whatnot. So. If it's something you've noticed um, in your own flying, uh, you know, and wonder why does it do that, you know, maybe that's why. Um, certainly on a throttle to down elevator mix, that's another one. You change the ATV of the throttle or the elevator, you know, that can that can have a have an impact on on that mix. You know, throttle to rudder, any mixes you're using, you really gotta understand when you're changing those those ATVs. It kind of crosses over, so. So just, like I say, set them up, leave them. If you do have to change them, understand the impact of that change and that you probably need to reset uh, a few of those other features. Anyways, that's it for this video. Um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments or catch me on Facebook. Um, always subscribe. We'll try to do more of these over the winter time here as i got some more time and flying's not so busy. Um, take care, everybody. Have a good day.